Apple continues to fight against right to repair by disabling features in iPhones that were repaired through third party shops. Now, this is something that I actually have a little bit of insight on because as some of you know, I used to work at Geek Squad several years ago. Now, when I first started working there, we didn't really give much support to Apple products beyond software fixes, which even then were not that common. Mac OS is still based on Unix, so the core design of it is actually very sound. Most of my dislikes of Mac OS really just come from the fact that it is an open source and it's a lot less customizable than GNU Linux or even Windows for that matter. So yeah, typically our work with Apple products was very light. Usually it would be things like SSD upgrades or RAM upgrades to at least the Macs that could have those upgrades done in-house. Uh, and a typical day in the life of a Geek Squad agent was mostly just filled with PC repairs. And then it happened. Nobody saw it coming, but almost overnight, Geek Squad became an even crappier version of the Genius Bar. We basically became the Genius Bar if you ordered it off of Wish. Instead of fixing eight or nine PCs in a day, we started doing repairs on dozens of iPhones per day. Well, let me clarify. We would fix your iPhone if we actually had the Apple certified parts to do so, because oftentimes, Apple wouldn't actually give us all of the parts to do same day repairs, yet they would still schedule people to come into our store to get their iPhone fixed the same day. Like imagine how frustrating that is to have a broken iPhone, you go onto Apple's website to make an appointment, they tell you, oh, the Genius Bar is booked for the next two weeks, but you can go to Geek Squad today, it's basically the same thing. Apple would schedule these appointments knowing that we didn't have the parts to fix their particular iPhone because they are the only vendor that you are allowed to get parts from if you become a certified repair shop. Now, the major difference between a certified Apple repair center like Geek Squad and all of the other third party outlets is that we actually had the calibration machine. Without this thing, you cannot do screen repairs on an iPhone 5S or newer and have Touch ID work. Even if you used a genuine Apple phone screen, you could literally take the screen off of a brand new iPhone 5S and then replace the broken one with it and the Touch ID still won't work. And you might also get a message on the iPhone telling you that the screen isn't genuine, which is a bit misleading because obviously it is. Uh, because despite the name of this machine, this thing isn't just used for calibration to make sure that uh, you know your touch input is working correctly and that I guess colors are showing up the way that they're supposed to. It also connects to a non-public Apple server that allows the touch ID uh, button, like that little home button, which is also a fingerprint reader, uh, embedded in the new screen to be paired with the iPhone. And this isn't a machine that you can really just go out and buy. Like, it's, it's not an issue of money, okay? You could have a whole bunch of money saved. You could be the son of a, you know, rich oil mogul and say, hey, I'm going to go create the best iPhone repair shop of all time. It doesn't matter. You need to form a partnership with Apple. You have to follow all of their rules, all of their procedures, which honestly could limit the scope of your business because if you were to also do things like uh, motherboard repairs in-house, Apple isn't going to let you do those. They do not want soldering irons to be present in the same shop that you are doing iPhone screen repairs or battery replacements in. Even if you're really good at this stuff and you've been doing it for years, Apple is going to tell you that you have to change that business model if you want to become a partner with them. You also have to become an Apple certified repair technician, uh, which isn't such a big deal, but you do have to take a whole bunch of boring tests and quizzes. And so the cost to you is a whole lot of time, effort, and compliance. And then, only then, after jumping through all those hoops, will you be allowed to rent one of these machines. That's right, they're never for sale. You only get to rent it. And someone from Apple still has to come and set it up for you because, of course, Apple isn't going to just give you the credentials to go and connect to that verification server by yourself. 
Now, this was years ago that I worked at Geek Squad and Touch ID isn't even really a thing anymore. And I at least thought that some progress was being made on the right to repair front. Uh, but no, or at least not as much as I thought, uh, because now Apple is going to disable Face ID on your repaired iPhone, unless you run it through this calibration machine and get it approved by Apple, which as I've already explained, is not an option for most third-party repair shops. Like even if there was an Apple store across the street from your repair shop, and you have a really good relationship with the GM there, it's not like you can just do a repair in your shop with an OEM screen and then go across the street to calibrate it. Because every iPhone and every iPhone part has a serial number that Apple tracks. And this serial number has to be scanned in to your repair report, which is sent into Apple along with your technician ID, which uniquely identifies the person who did the repair. So Apple knows who is fixing whose iPhone and who used what part. This isn't a system with a whole lot of loopholes uh, that you can get around uh, in Apple's bureaucracy. And again, most consumers don't understand this. They just get a message on their screen saying that, oh, this part isn't genuine. And then they believe that the repair shop ripped them off. Now, there is a way around this uh, particular phone repair, or this particular limitation uh, with Touch ID, which phone repair guru mentioned in his video. Basically, you have to take off these chips from the broken screen that are soldered onto it and then solder those onto the replacement screen. These chips are basically what gives the screen that unique ID. So the workaround is pretty much trick the phone into thinking that the new screen is the old one. But the thing is, soldering skills aren't really that common amongst phone and computer repair technicians, unless your name happens to be Lewis Rossman. Uh, yeah, he's literally the only person I can think of that does these kinds of repairs, um, you know, doesn't do like manufacturing uh, and is still good at soldering. During my time at Geek Squad, nobody there knew how to solder. Uh, none of my friends who work at the Genius Bar know how to solder, and I'm pretty sure none of like their coworkers know how to either. It's literally just something that I've started learning in my spare time. It's, it's not the kind of skill that you really pick up on these types of jobs. Like if you're working IT or computer repair, you're probably not ever going to end up touching uh, a soldering iron, at least not if you're working for these big names like Apple or Geek Squad. Uh, so as if you needed to be reminded again, Apple is a morally corrupt company whose every move is calculated to extract as much money out of their consumers as possible. In fact, this nonsense that they continue to do with blocking third-party repairs is a direct contradiction to their environmentally friendly claims. Apple went so far as to stop shipping chargers with their devices because, oh no, extra plastic is bad for the environment. But if you break your phone screen and Apple refuses to fix it, then you have to buy a whole new phone, which is much worse. It's much more pollution involved creating an entire iPhone than it is creating a charger. It's all just a cash grab so that they can make more money while giving you less.